Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Ryan Mechanic channel. How the heck are you doing today? Today's video, I wanted to go over an accident, and accidents are not great, so for this one, it's not great at all, and I wanted to talk about it. So we're going to be talking about the Melbourne Royal roller coaster accident on the Rebel. So let's get into that. Now get ready. Here we go. <laughs> If this is your first time here, make sure you like and subscribe, do all that stuff downstairs. It helps me out and I do appreciate it. So let's get right into this video. On the video, basically we have a, it's a fair for all intents and purposes. This is in Melbourne, Australia, the uh, Melbourne Royal. And this is a, an accident where a lady has unfortunately sustained, sustained some really bad injuries. Shayla Rodden, Royal Roller Coaster that struck a woman, left her with brain damage at the Melbourne Royal Show. Um, this is this is not a good thing at all. This is not what we want. It's not uh, something anybody looks forward to, and these are the things the industry tries to prevent as much as possible. We know a little bit about this incident. Uh, the lady involved is 26 years old. She was actually working at the fair at the time, and she rode this roller coaster, lost her cell phone on the ride. Afterwards, when she got off, she went to retrieve it. And uh, this happens, it's quite common. Unfortunately, people wander into ride areas to get their phones or anything else that they've dropped, and tragedy strikes. So... Let's look at this video. It's definitely a fair warning. I'm looking at this one from ads and bits, but it's been around a lot, so I don't know where the actual source came from. So fair warning on that one. But let's take a look at this. Jeez. The video is really short. Wow. Oh. Alright, so here she is down here. Again, she was working at this event. She wasn't working this ride. That was one thing I thought. I'm like, she was working the ride? No, she wasn't working the ride. She was just working at the event in its by itself. And she had ridden on the roller coaster, and what it says is right over here in the corner. This is the station right here. This is actually the exit where you would get off. And then down here, she just happened to climb down, and she's looking for her phone, which must have fallen out right around this exact same area. And then... When I first saw this video, I thought it was basically fake. Because I saw this over here, and you could see a, like the person coming away from the roller coaster right there. So I looked at the roller coaster, and it doesn't have side brake fins. So I'm like, man, how did that happen? So I went back and tried to replay and I'm, I wanted to really look at it good so I'm gonna go step by step coaster comes around and for some reason right here what I can see is that if you if you watch her like she's standing there and she's got her hand against the track and it looks like she's I, I don't know I don't think she's looking at the coaster I think just like anybody, she's got that target fixation. She's come out of there. The adrenaline's probably going. She's, oh my gosh, I need to get my phone back, which unfortunately is the is the first thought most people have in this scenario. And she's probably scanning the infield in this area looking for it. This ride runs two trains, and when this train got back in the station the other one had 
already left the lift. I actually watched a handful of videos on this and their timing is pretty consistent. By the time this one pulls in and the restraints unlock, that the other train has already crowned over the lift. So a lot of people, I know the first comment you're gonna have, it's the same one I did. It's like, well, why didn't they e-stop the ride? Well, by the time these, this person got out and started walking towards the back of the train, the other train was already in the next block zone. It already left the lift hill. So even if she had, the, per, the operator probably did try to e-stop, but I mean, nothing's gonna happen. Once it leaves the lift, it's under gravity. And then it's just a matter of timing after that. The person was probably scanning the area and they said, oh, look, there's my phone, not realizing that the train is that close to them. Now, I've heard this a lot and I know this this mindset, which is, you know, it's it's a big, noisy train with people screaming on it. How can you miss that? When you have that target lock, that target fixation, everything else falls away. Um, and you go into an area, especially with your adrenaline pump, and your brain tends to rule things out. And it's just like, okay, well, that's that's not an issue anymore. Um, so she's probably in there hyper fixated on just where her phone is, just where her camera is. And that's what she wants to find. Let's see here. So, and I thought this was edited because it happens so quick, but you're thinking the the train's probably moving at 20 miles an hour, and then it meets a stopped object at 20 miles an hour, so that person picks up 20 miles per hour speed. Let's go right here. See, she, man, she looked at that. She, start, she steps right in front of it, directly in front of it. She goes from resting to steps in front of it right as it comes along. And then I have to do this frame by frame because right there, she's right in front of the roller coaster as it's passing by. Now, I thought there was a bit of a ratio issue. That's why I was like, oh man, is this fake? But I started Googling it and it's like, nope, it's not fake. So there, 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 and then hit by the train, just right in the front, just hit, at the very front of the train just like you would be hit by a car and then the train passes through and you can actually see her she's in front of the coach down there she's right there in front of the coach she's literally on top of the rails in front of the coach being pushed and then when the coaster comes up she starts coming off to the side because I think the coach is also turning a little bit at this point. And she's actually scrubbed off a fair amount of speed from that roller coaster and energy, a lot of it. Uh, so she, the coaster comes up and it stops and she continues to go right there. Now, it actually stopped right there. Uh, it looks like there are some any rollbacks that prevented that train from coming all the way back down because on the media news afterwards you could see that train is stopped right there and they're having to ratchet it forward to try to unload the back of the coaches over there so there was enough momentum it stopped the train short of making the hill and continuing continuing on and unfortunately she was ejected across the pathway on the other side this is again this is this is never good stuff to see but it's one thing that as oh jeez frizzle frack as being working with and close to the industry it's something that you need to be aware of you can't be ignorant to this stuff cuz every ounce of prevention helps so they did an investigation and they looked at the operator and I actually have a video. Uh, there was a mobile phone at the base of the Rebel Coaster that she dropped on the ride and uh, she went back to recover the mobile phone and uh, regrettably uh, she was tragically struck by the cart coming down the roller coaster. So there was a full investigation and 
they didn't find anything wrong. Obviously, the roller coaster was working like it was supposed to. The roller coaster did not malfunction. Um, the operation staff, they were in their correct places. They were operating it the way they were supposed to. And when you have stations like this where you can get out of it easily, I've got another picture of this. Hold on. So here's the picture I have. I, I found an on-ride video and took a screen snip from it. Um, here's the station. Nothing fancy, right? It's a fair ride. And then here is the area where the person was standing right here. So they literally got off the train walking towards the exit, which was right there. And then they simply just crossed the track and stepped down. With it being that close, there wasn't really any sort of like prevention that they could have done. If you look at this right here, right at the edge of the station, see there's a fence line right here. Um, so the only thing that the operator could do to make this situation better for the future now, unfortunately, is to post another attendant right here at the exit. That's pretty much all they can do. Uh, because there's, if you want to get people that maliciously walk into an infield, that they can they can do stuff like that. Um, one of the comments I'm sure that will be, well, well, why didn't you know you could put, you know, roller coasters have gates that will automatically open and close. It's like you're talking about a control system retrofit for a lot of money. <laughs> That's probably going to be pretty complex especially because when anytime you put gates in front of a car it you add to the block system of the ride you have to you have to tie it in directly which is a, a major massive modification to the ride that most places will never opt to do um i remember we had an slc um, we had an SLC, which is right next to our floorless coaster. The floorless coaster has the big cattle gates that open and close in front of the train because you're walking next to the edge. Uh, so they put the gates there so you don't fall over the edge. And I remember the safety lady had come up and said, well, what can we do about our SLC? It's got the same problem. And I'm like, no, you're like 10, 15 feet away from that edge. And the operator standing right there, if someone starts walking up to that edge, you could just stop them. And they talked with engineering, and they're like, what can we do about this? Because people could just fall over the edge, and it wasn't, it had never happened, and it wasn't enough of a hazard to where it felt the need to guard it, especially when those fingers, those gates that open and close like that, now you have to tie that directly into the ride's control system. You're putting something in the way of the ride path, which is, it's never good anytime you do something like that. Putting things in the way of the ride path is not good because there's always a chance the vehicle can strike it and injure more people. Nobody wants that to happen. This was a different picture I had, uh, kind of from the same video. I was just trying to take different screenshots of it, but it's a little further away. You can see the area a little better. See, there's these big concrete blocks on the ground there, um, where if the phone fell out in this area, she would have stepped easy. It would have been an easy step down from there to there, looking for it, going, oh, I might see it. And then as soon as she did... She probably saw the coaster go up this side of the track, not thinking in her head that, hey, it's going to go over the top and come back around. When you deal with people that are in the community, like pretty much everyone watching this channel is in the community, when you deal with that, from the internal side of it, it's like, how do you not understand that's a loop? But when you're just dealing with people that never do this stuff, they never are around rides, they're never thinking about it, they don't understand the hazards that are involved once you cross out of that station. Most people don't. Most people think roller coasters are just little tiny small things that you could just start and stop on your own. It's like, oh, it's no big deal. Um, the number one thing I always get people with all the time is, hey, how, much, how many people do you think it takes to push a roller coaster? Like flat, level piece of track, and there's a roller coaster sitting there loaded with people. How many people do you think it takes just to push that roller coaster forward. And people so I imagine just walk up to it and just go and it goes forward. It's like, yeah, yeah, you need like four to six people to push that roller coaster. And that is a hard push. That's like everyone pushing as hard as they can, four to six people to get that train moving. So they're not easy to push. There's a lot of weight 
in there. A lot of weight wrapped up on that track. Um, coaster fairs like this one is only three coaches. It's probably not as bad, but still a lot of energy sitting there. There are plenty of smaller coasters out there where you could simply just go out and get in the infield. Um, th a lot of them are not that hard, especially when you start talking about kids rides and smaller fair style rides. You can just leave the station and walk into the infield. Now, a lot of them don't have a second train running around. That is one thing. It's like a lot of those a lot of those fairs don't have a second train running around. Uh, to where you can get struck by that. Uh, one thing comes to mind is like I had a uh, Tavali coaster made by Seer. Seer? <laughs> trying to remember from all the comments I got when I tried to butcher that name the last time. Uh, when it was made by Seer, Seer, <laughs> or what I said, I always called it Zaire. It's actually Seer. Um, a large Tavali coaster made by them, and then a family coaster made by Zamprilla. And the family coaster and the Tavali coaster were both one of those things that if you got off it and you just turned yourself around and started walking the other direction, you'd be right onto the track, right into the infield. And you're there. But those are also single, single vehicle rides. So our operations track staff was trained that anytime anybody ever moves outside of the normal paths that they walk away from the train and walk towards the exit, um, they're trained to e-stop the ride, no matter what. The ride could be sitting in the station. And if the person's like, oh, I need something, I see it right there, and they start to walk into the track area, even though the coaster stopped, it's not going anywhere, they still e-stop the ride every single time. Just in case. Just in case. So, unfortunately for this one, it's a really bad event. I followed up a little bit on it. The lady spent a year in intensive care with most of her body shattered apart. And she just recently, just this year, I think it was... No, it was... This happened in 2022. Yeah, this happened September 25th of 2022. And then she spent like half a year to a year in intensive care, pretty much. And then after that, she's been moved out, not out of the hospital, not home. She's been moved to just a different care facility because her body's mangled after this. Um, this just underlines some of that danger of like never, never go into an infield once you start going in there and the adrenaline starts pumping, your brain forgets normal things like where trains are, what direction the trains are going, all that sort of stuff. Um, so we, we just we don't go in infields in general. Stay out of infields of rides, never go into them. They're really dangerous and deadly places. Um, luckily, this lady didn't die from this accident. But the quality of life, which is what you have to look at, the quality of life is probably not going to be great after this, after this long road of recovery that she's going through. That's not going to be great at all. So this is one of those things. It's not a lighthearted review. It's not, a, hey, look, this is funny. This is, this is serious stuff. This is the end of it. This is, this was one one split hair away from death. And this is the side of the industry no one likes. But it's out there, and I think we all have to be aware of it, like I was saying. It's the same thing I tell people when I say, oh, I, wor I work with a high voltage, you know, like big incoming power for the ride with a lot of amperage behind it. Or I work at heights, you know, hanging off the side of a roller coaster. I say you have to have a healthy respect for it. You can't be afraid of it because you'll never get anything done. But you have to have a healthy respect for it to know that everything you do might be the last thing you do. And our goal at the end of the day is to get all the workers home safe and all the people that come through the front gate home safe. That's what we're there for. So you have fun and go home safe. The same way you came into the park should be the same way you left. And this is unfortunate. I, and I'm sure... I'm, I'm sure this person also felt a little bit 
entitled to go get her cell phone because she worked at the fair. It kind of, you know, you have that different mindset when it's like, oh, I work here. It's fine, I work here. And then you feel like a lot of the rules don't apply to you. If you've ever worked at a place where you had that feeling before, it's like, oh yeah, no one's supposed to do this, but I work here. It's fine. So a very unfortunate set of circumstances, unfortunately, for this video. If you want to comment, go ahead, comment downstairs, like it, give it, uh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know other things. I'm sure the stories will start coming out. We've, unfortunately, if you've been in the amusement industry long enough, even just not so much like as a worker, but even just around amusement rides, fair rides long enough, I'm sure you've seen your fair share of things that went wrong. And those stories are typically not great, but they're eye-openers, especially to people that have never seen this stuff before. They're kind of like, what? That can happen? It's like, yeah. Yeah, that's the reason we have areas you're not supposed to be in and things you're not supposed to do. Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Remember, stay off the air gates. Bye.